So uh, as you guys know, Steve is not here for the value of the week, so I'm going to take it over this week. Uh, I, I'm going to do my damnedest, but you know, uh, fish swim, birds fly, Steve does the value of the week. It's just the way it works. But we're going to go old school to kick it off today. Let's be totally and brutally honest here. Sean Corbin makes Valerie Brudov look like Ivan Drago. It's as simple as that. He's beat what's in front of him tonight. He faces me. He's going to visit mental demons again. And let's get let's get something straight. Come to me, mate. You come to me. Next time, ain't no judges going to be needed. I'm going to do worse than Kovalev. I am going to do worse than Kovalev. Saturday night, mate, you better hold together. I'm going to smash it near you to pieces, mate. I'm going to hurt him. When he gets in the ring and we get 10-ounce gloves on, I'm going to smash his head to bits. I'm going to do it November the 30th against all odds. No matter what people say, the journalists write what you want. All as I'll say is tune back in and then look at me on December the 1st when I am world champion. It's as simple as that. I'm willing to die in that ring. It's as simple as that. I am willing to die. I'm willing to die, Sati. Is he? You fucking rat! There ain't nobody like him, ladies and gentlemen. There ain't nobody <laughs> like him. Every time I crack up that, it's fucking brilliant. <laughs> Wonder well, told me. So... All right, let's kick it off here. Oh man. Oh, Joe Gonzalez. Uh he uh he believes that he won the fight. Um <laughs> we're looking at this picture here of uh Joe on the screen. Fucking um hope. man, unless you got All a last right. round knockout, uh yeah, the people don't usually look like this who won fights. You never uh, got me down, Ray. <laughs> yeah, yeah, th th this shit ain't th this shit ain't like Rocky, you know, uh, my my fucking god. Jesus Christ, never ready. Fucked him up good. Oh, that's a quality one. All right. Let's see here. Ted Barrett sent this in. Let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Nick Peel says, whether Dillian White is mandatory or just in interim champ, either way, he's in pole position to finally fight for WBC boxing gold and shouldn't risk that, that opportunity unnecessarily. White withdrawal makes, bo makes boxing and business sense when you're not only – WBC boxing mandatory, but only available dance partner for Tyson Fury heading into 2022. Right? Why risk another Pavetkin style upset? God damn it! I, from a business point, this actually makes perfect sense. I just fucking hate White for it. Actually, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just the business of the sport. I mean, as I say, unless there's, so, there's going to be something written in that contract, I don't think there will be. I think the contract will heavily favor Dylan White's side, without doubt. Um, the honor would be as you know, the fight would be rescheduled. Um, you know, but in the day, look, he is. I remember Dylan White complaining that, yeah, I remember at times it was Fury Josh. I can't mind how much money they were trying to offer Fury to fight Josh and that, but anyways, I think part of the reason was, um, White rejected the Joshua fight was because he's only getting something like offered like four million for the fight, he wanted more, I think it was over 10 or something. So he's sitting on a potential £10 million pound paid, roughly, I, I don't know, I, I'm making up fucking numbers here and that, but you think it's going to be sizable fucking millions. Why risk it, as you say? Business, there's no sport in the world that carries the business like fucking boxing does, by the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. You want it, to Eddie? Hey, Oz, do, do you think Eddie's going to be able to strong-arm Fury into an immediate rematch clause for uh, in case Dillian no loses? Chance. This needs to be <laughs> fucked off as well, as by the way. As far as I'm aware, um... Eddie can potentially have nothing to do with this fight because I don't think Dillian White is actually contracted to Matchroom. Uh, and I, that, therefore, uh, unless it goes to purse bids and Eddie actually wins it, if you're not contracted to your promoter, then why is he going to be involved? It would solely be probably top rank, top rank could win it, um, you know, slash Queensbury, um, or, you know, as a combination of them two. Uh, they will promote the fight. And unless, you know, you know, White wants him involved, but then why would he give him a cut in, you know, when he's not his promoter? Because you're not contracted to him. Why would you? But back to that Nick Pete thing. I get it makes business sense from Dillian White, but he can piss off with that bullshit opinion. What about the fans? You know, what about the people who've booked train tickets, accommodation, Otto Wallin? If you're going to pull out the fight, at the moment, he's in no better situation than he was six weeks ago. Apart from the fact he knows who he's going to be, bo well, potentially boxing. But also, Tyson do we know? Do we know if ticket sales were actually even that good for that Dylan White fight? I've not. I've no idea. I've absolutely no idea. I think Hearn said they did about ten thousand, which you know, for any boxing show, I think ten thousand tickets is a great effort. You know, that's decent. But 
he's in no better situation than he was six weeks ago. Apart from the fact he knows the opponent, it's Tyson Fury. Six weeks ago, it was either going to be Tyson Fury or um, Deontay Wilder. Now, unless something's happened behind the scenes from where he is now guaranteed that fight, why didn't he pull out six weeks ago? You you could have got Wall in another fight. You could have got replacement. People could have, you know, potentially got, you know, easier refunds. Instead, they've gone, right, you can get a refund on your ticket, but you need to let us know by Monday. No, hang on. Why Monday? <laughs> and that is, that, 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 is a, that is a typical uh, Hearn thing to do, you know, in terms of, Being right, expected. well, basically... Yeah. I, I bet they're making sure them. that information is widely available to Oz. Yeah, ex exactly. And then it, once that Monday deadline has passed, might be Tuesday, you know, you, you might have been away or something like that. You can't activate it. What's happened? Both. I've got to go because I can't even get rid of the ticket. You can even give it away on a secondary market to get cash back because, you know, uh, the, amount of t the amount of comments were saying, I want a refund, I want a refund. So it's like, you know, it's all right saying, yeah, from a, a white perspective, it makes a business decision. But, this Nick Pete, you know, he, he bangs on about how he's a boxer. Uh, he's a boxing fan as well. Well, you look at it from your perspective. Imagine you'd booked, you know, to go, you know, down to London and things like that. It's it's a joke, absolute joke of an opinion. And, you know, it's all right saying that, but it, it's something I completely disagree with, you know, pulling out one week before the fight. How fucking coincidental. How you feel bad for Paul Walling, like he's on, he's on like fucking seconds out interviews and all trying to campaign for the yeah. fucking... For the independent doctor, all right, man. That's what Eddie's mm. going to mandate. Is he's going to push for that? Can we get an independent doctor in, please, for Otto Wallin, so he can have his well, fucking I mean. confirmation? I, I was saying, I was saying before you came on, Rob. Hearn is now saying that they gave Wallin the opportunity. Wallin is not, you know, he's he's ranked number twenty. It's actually eighteen by Boxrec. But I was saying this is fucking Eduardo who was trying to say I'm putting fights like Dillian White and Otto Wallin what usually would be pay-per-view on, you know, just a general subscription. Well, make your mind up. Make exactly. your mind up. It's either, a, it's either a good fight, and in terms of, you know, like, yeah, great fight, don't then come out slagging the opponent off, saying, he gave, we've given this opportunity, we've done that. Bullshit. He, Absolute he gave bullshit. Fury, he gave Fury his best fight in the last fucking five years, and, well, apart yeah. from the Wilder fights, but he gave him his, one of his toughest fights in the last five years, and he smashed up Dominic Brazil, just as good as Wilder and fucking Anthony Joshua. So he was in the mix, man. He's as good as Dillian White. And I, as I said, I don't think they thought White was going to beat Wallin. Like, I think that's a panic a panic decision. It's a, it's a safety first. Yeah. Fuck this, man. You are going to fuck the bag up forever. AJ's already after doing it. You're going to fuck this up if you take this fight. Like, Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think they knew as well. That I wonder if they've been told that basically. WBC said, if you get beat, there's none of this you come back to us and, you know, that thought, you know, we hold up, you know, Tyson Fury can't get another fight, you know, because of the, you know, the mandatory thing, you know, because you've got beat. If you get beat, you wave bye-bye to this mandatory. I fully suspect that we're going to see something because Hearn kept referencing, you know, oh, there's legal things going on and you're going to hear an announcement soon from Dillian's, what, Dillian White's lawyers. I fully they must be fucking the busiest soon. fucking bastards in London, them, the Dillian White's lawyers. They're fucking full time, full time employees. The boys are whether they're fucking, yeah, working working yeah. with the fucking BB of C or whoever. Jesus Christ, Dillian White's lawyers are overloaded. It's fucking unreal. It's unreal, and I think we've probably dedicated a good twenty minutes of this podcast to just cussing out Dillian White in general. So um, there's a lot of wins here, a lot of wins if uh, for people that uh, hate the son of a bitch. Uh, God, a special auto auto wall and probably dedicate all this hate for to that guy. Poor son of a bitch. He's turning some good stuff to you guess just to get jacked. All right, let's see here. Got another nomination. Let's see here. Uh Fight Disciples. Uh Bryce sent this in. Uh Fight Disciples says uh let's see, yeah, September twenty sixth, episode five thirty one. Uh AJ needs to sack his coach, head to America to find a new one and get that dog back. We really should be charging for this type of consultancy. Please see his team he has team listened and took action fuck off as if they were the only fucking people that said AJ needs to fucking he needs a new coach and needs to get the dog back that was the fucking Twitter fucking consensus immediately after the fight fuck faces it, it, it's, it's very simple Rob he uh, a AJ needs to uh, just take the title of a Chris Rock album and he needs to put it forward into concept he needs to be bigger and blacker I thought you were going to say bring the pain but anyway let's go, <laughs> let's, let's go. yeah also a good one also a mm -hmm. good one Right on. Uh, let's see here. All right. 
Uh, we got a nomination for uh, Leon Bellon Dior. Uh, at this moment in time, before round nine, Gonzalez was given the simple advice of fucking hit him. Well, Sometimes the go. simple ones are the best ones, man. Do you know what I mean? Straight it's a goal. Point. It's a fucking goal. That's that's all you have to do, mate. Just fucking hit him. That's all he said to him. <laughs> if, if only more boxers would think about that when they're uh, when they go into the ring. I I just have to hit him. Maybe if I hit him once, I could hit him twice, and it'll just compound from there. Pure bastard. Tim Boxeo sent it in. Oh God, another one from Clarissa. From the quote, Andy, your your hero. I'll never understand why people can place bets on me, and I don't see any of that money. Kind of makes me think of taxes. I pay taxes because I work my ass off to make money just to pay taxes. It's all backwards to me. Well, Clarissa, I don't agree with the boxing, but a lot of taxation is theft. So uh, welcome aboard that fucking train. Yeah, <laughs> she's also what else was she wanting? She wanted a percentage of the people who were betting on her as well this week. Clarissa, she's fucking yes. red hot. If she you does, fight, she doesn't understand how people can make money off her. She's not getting any of it. So you have to bet like a thousand bucks on her to make a hundred bucks. Uh, most fights, like hey, what percentage of fucking that risk do you <laughs> yeah, want? Betting on Clarissa, she, like she's red hot. Fucking bookie's favorite in every fight. Hey, um. Why do I keep forgetting what I was going to say? It's that red aircraft. It's after fucking sending a laser beam at me. I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> She's a no, fucking someone should explain to her that you can't, if your fucking people are betting on you, you can't work with them behind the scenes, as Michael Gomez found out. Mm-hmm. So you've you got to be careful in that, going down that road as a professional boxer. <laughs> Pete Rose should be in the Hall of Fame, goddammit. Oz, were you saying something, my man? I was going to say, she's a stupid cow thinking that. I mean, what she on? She would transform the betting. <laughs> she transformed the betting market in the world. You know that. Oh, I want. You know, why can people place bets on me and I don't see any of that cash? Well, imagine like Man United and Man City said, right. Well, why can people? Why can they place bets on us and we don't see any of that cash? The whole gambling market would be forever, ever. Game changed. Yeah, game changed. Literally, completely, game changed. She's a fucking dumb idiot. Yeah, yeah, and, and but you know, Oz, those five million dollar paydays are just one tweet away. You know, people will get it. They'll they'll get it one day. They'll they'll see why she's the quote. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Uh, Kevin, uh, we got Kevin Cunningham doing uh, heavyweight work with Big Baby Miller. Uh, Love Joy Boxing, getting it in today. Oh my fucking god! Uh Arsenal uh, sent that in. Uh, he's at uh, M. Curiacal. Uh, he this, says, that Jesus Christ, they'll need a reinforced ring. Rob, they, I think that fucking big baby might be the smaller fighter as far as weight goes right now. What the fuck? I'm not going to say if you if you type in the dregs of heavyweights into Google that this should be the fucking picture that comes up. Fucking Chris jo- Lovejoy and big baby. Fucking hell, man. Like I said, you need Eric Molina in that mix. That's a kind of a bottom tier, super fucking six. We can get going there with a few shit heavy. That's actually a good one we could do for a slow week. Who be the shittest fucking heavyweights we could put into a super six? Because the heavyweight division is so fucking thin outside the top guys. So who be the best best fights out of the shit guys? We could go for like Saul Fire in there. I'm sure he could get up the heavyweight. We fucking be amazing, man. I don't know what to think anymore about the heavyweight division when tyson fury's gone gentlemen uh, uh we just could be fucked we we could be very well fu- be fucked for another 10 years there'll be another vlad like t- character who will fucking carry the division for a dozen years without having a bat an eye let's see here what do we got here uh let's see here god damn what a weird name inquisitor generalis uh said Hellenius can give Fury some work. Usyk too small. Uh, let's see here. Fury White in February. Uh, Fury watch. Oh God! And then uh, Stacy Smith on top of that one saying Fury White in February. Lovely. Watch Fury do everything to avoid it. In what fucking timeline, Andy? Would would Tyson Fury ever worry about fighting Dillian White? Oh, I don't know, mate. I guess stems back to that situation with the WBC member that was a. Uh... They were trying to sort out some sort of eliminator or I can't mean if it was an interim title fight. Uh, I think White rejected it or something and he put an appeal in. 
And then they won the appeal, but I think um, Fury had to rematch Wilder, I think, at one point. I can't mind the actual, the actual dates again. I need to go back and double-check it. But, yeah, I mean, it makes no sense, you know, fucking... He's not like Dr. Lane White, as I say. He's, uh, he already said before the fucking Wilder fight, he's going to fight White next. He said, after I beat Wilder, I'm going to fight White next. Then I'm going to fight the fucking Joshua, who he thought was going to fucking beat Usyk. Like, yeah, he's already right. said he's going to fight Dillian White. What the fuck? It's going to be a shit fight as well, by the way, because Fury's going to absolutely fucking obliterate D- Dillian White. But, you know. It's this, you know, thinking back other than... um God, who was the one he fought before Otto Vall in that he just wrecked in four rounds? It's so innocuous. Thomas Fartz. Thanks. Uh, yeah, it, 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 it's it's gonna it's gonna be his easiest fight since that one. Not a not a doubt I in my mind. I don't think guy actually, but it's not German. I thought he fought some mid level guys after that. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Repo I'm wrong. Rick. Repo Rick needs to give him a shout, man. Yeah, what the fuck, man. Give these guys some work. At least get them behind a truck, towing some cars, Rick. What the fuck? All right. We got, uh, let's see here. Oh, let's see here. Portobello partners with Venezuela's moron boxing. (laughs) Multi-fight, multi-year Venezuela. Oh, what the fuck? Moron boxing. That must be a last name there. Or I don't know the people running the country possibly. What do you think, Rob? Or the, the guys at Pro Bellum have some good connections in Latin America. Good bunch of lads. Good bunch yeah, of lads. Good bunch of lads, of lads who are just well connected in well. South America for some reason. So all the best to them. Uh, them and the Moron Boxing, I, I think that's going to be a very fruitful partnership. Great bunch of lads. Very apt name. They they do sound like a very interesting uh, bunch of lads. God damn, you got to wonder how hard it is to convince somebody to do something like boxing to get paid in Venezuelan currency right now. I, that, I mean, that's got to be a, beyond a bitch and a half at this point in time, wouldn't you think? Well, you know. Yeah, well, you know. 20, 2021, baby. Anything yeah, all, all of our currency is going to be worth shit soon. Buy Bitcoin, right? Ask they Rodney. Keep saying I'm gonna go, they're going to buy Bitcoin, right? And everyone's like, someone explained it to me. Like, as long as one computer works somewhere in the world, there's no way they can pull the plug on it, but they can just pull the plugs on all the computers one day and Bitcoin's going to be gone. Like, in a Bitcoin, Rodney, Repo, Rick, all the boys, you'll never see him again. Like, you don't need to shut down all the computers. What happens if you have a fucking power cut in the house? We're one, window, like we're one Windows <laughs> update away from losing billions of dollars. <laughs> you heard it here first. The red fucking spacecraft told me, told me all this shit. <laughs> and now I'm relaying it to you on the boxing <laughs> asylum. <laughs> you, you could end this with beat me up, Scotty, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking rage I didn't think of that <laughs> oh man so I, I got a couple in from Facebook here um, I'm just kind of I was uh, that was kind of stalled to be able to get into all these let's see here uh, God I wish that I, I uh, had the Steve's ability on this device I still need to get the tutorial from him but uh, just uh, and the words are enough for this one Andy celebrate throw your hands in the air once again Adrian Broner has been jailed yes. this time for probation Ooh. violation Ooh. I was actually, if we can pass that one the roommate and come back to me on that one, because I've actually put him up for the nomination as well, but I've actually got a wee bit of extra detail as well on it, so uh, if we slip on past. Yeah, it, uh, I do son of a bitch. Welcome back. Well, <laughs> and it, th- this is all related, and he's going to have to enter an alcohol treatment program um, after his assault <laughs> on the woman in a nightclub, so yeah. no, you're not going to be able to find uh, Adrian Broner in the club, oh, for uh, fuck's punching sake. holes and sluts. About isn't, that, isn't that tough on you if you're fucking... If you if you're in the fucking old Alcoholics Anonymous, like you gotta go through your ten steps with fucking baby bro beside you trying to play dice with you and all in the breaks. So stop, <laughs> stop, baby. I don't want to gamble anymore, man. Stop. I'm in here for a reason. <laughs> Fuck that shit, bro. Brush my hair. I'm fucking tired of brushing your hair, man. I'm trying to quit this fucking alcohol. Give me a drink. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh man. Oh, I'm gonna have to skip over this. Uh, this one. Holy. The, oh, well, hell, someone said in the chat, hold on, breaking news, Tom Schwartz is in jail for stomping fucking on his wife's head. Ah, Tom, man. <laughs> Are you that, shitting man? me? For fuck's sake, man. In lockdown took it too far for him, I think. Jesus it, Christ, man. That's fucking, there's weight divisions for a reason, man. Can't, you can't be doing yeah. that to the missus. For fuck's sake, Tom Schwartz. Maybe he's going to fucking pen pal Obanov when he's in the slammer. Who knows where this is going to go. 
So uh, our uh, our buddy Ben Thorne sent me a couple on Facebook as well. Uh, he sent me this tweet from uh, the uh, the good doctor uh, Joseph Ajayo, THB, uh, TV, uh, and, and many many other acronyms of great meaning. Oz, they they are all meaningful. Uh, and he says, "I am a technical advisor for AJ to beat Usyk and go far." Period. He must learn from Floyd Jr. Defense, boxing IQ, and imagination. Lennox Lewis, heavy jabs and hard punches. Mike Tyson's head movement and damaging blows. Fred Roach, a well-rounded lesson. Virgil uh, Virgil Hill, boxing, psychoanalysis. <laughs> Oz, why is this man not in high demand? He just created the perfect fighter. Why is this program not yeah. being implemented now? <laughs> Underutilized, mate. I mean, I just don't understand why more more, more boxers aren't giving uh, the doctor himself another opportunity. It's bizarre, really. Um, but you know, maybe if we start up asylum promotions, he can be our lead trainer, Doctor Joseph Ajayo. Not with the fucking, not, not with the financial back, back and we're getting us. Thank you, Boo Boo. She was saying to us, so. <laughs> God, I, I even tried to bribe seventy nine cents out of these fucking assholes. These Didn't fucking get anything wrong. Soon, soon <laughs> so right. Have a great crack. They're not even listening to the pod. They're just talking to each other in there. Yo, we put oh. fucking wise on the start of the names. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get in oh, the yeah. fucking pockets. You have men get you trying to fucking do asylum promotions. You think this shit's going to run itself? For fuck's sake. Oh God, guys! I'm gonna see how if I can make this work the best I can uh, off my phone for the audio here. Oh, let's see here. Uh, we got one for uh, uh, into boxing is uh, nominating uh, our good buddy Carl Froch here. One thing I want to ask you: I know that these these questions are often overdone. How would you do against the likes of today? So I'm not going to ask that question now. What I, what I want to put it is: I want to ask Carl first how you think George would do against the likes of Canelo these days, and then George, I'll put the the same question to you about Carl in a moment. Said, you see George go into this live division at the minute. You've got Canelo seemingly about to take the, the undisputed crown. How how would George do in that division at the moment? I'm super middle by division. Yeah. I don't think Canelo's that big, but he stepped up from was he well to weight or he was super well to weight. Super so the old old blind middle. Blind middle so eleven yeah. stone, hundred and sixty pounds. I mean to step up from one sixty up to one seven five when he beat Cobbler. To me that's not normal. It's not natural either. No. I don't want anybody to read into that too much. Not many people could do that. <laughs> Not many people could step up their weights and uh, do well and go back down and still succeed. So that's one that's one thing. The other thing is I don't think Canelo's big enough. Even though he's stepped up, I've stood next to him, he's five foot nine. He's he's got short reach. Okay, he's tough, he's a good boxer, he's a, he's a top boxer, top fire. I just think I'd have been too big and too strong for him. But we're talking about George. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna take off. <laughs> 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 I think George will struggle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, when I was um. <laughs> Carl you know never mentioned this is a chance to talk about Carl, does he, Rob? You know what? Great fight, fucking great fight, and he's all the way in that fight. By the way, Carl Frotz, and he's fucking, you know, he's not, he's not a what you call it, um, exactly fucking. Talk conspiracy world there is he when he's talking about Canelo so but uh yeah so but um yeah good Carl Frotch man he's he's actually pretty self-aware the too big too strong is obviously a, a Tyan Booth reference as well because you know because of what he said about Golovkin previously so he's he's aware of it he's having a crack with it so good on him uh but you know mentioning Tyan Booth if he was having a live now he used to be all in there opening your wallet oh Tyan you're so funny oh the YB let's give you a fucking super chat oh Rust we give you a super we fucking started this gangster shit, okay? And that's the motherfucking thanks we get. Nothing on a Sunday night. Not even a 79 cent user. Uh, a, a pitiful bunch of fucking talking to each other in the chat. Not listening to the podcast. Assholes. Sorry, continue. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's a pause of information yeah. for you, Marty. It's, it's Get fucking, your fucking it's dollars. Fucking rough. Oh, just, I'm going to make him feel really <laughs> bad here in a while, Andy. So, um, Anyways, so that's uh, what I had in there. Because, Rob, I, I believe that you're, uh, the, are the Floyd videos at the bottom there your nominations? Yeah, yeah, no. So, uh, Steve said it's in the videos. You have to go to the videos file and pull you, it out there. You got it. I think I think they're right there at the bottom. So beautiful. We're set on that one, uh -huh. Andy. What do you got uh, to send us this week? 
Uh, well, obviously, the Adrian Broner situation, I just want to pick out that article. Obviously, AB's back behind jail, uh, sorry, back behind bars uh, for that court order probation. I think he was due to uh, pay her money of over $800,000. <coughs> and I was reading the article, and it also says here, Broner's legal troubles don't end there. He has to appear at another hearing on October 26 in the same court where the judge will decide where to hold him in contempt for failing to cooperate with a civil lawsuit the woman filed against him. In that case, an arrest warrant was issued after Brunner failed to show up for his disposition uh, this, this summer, was absent at the uh, contempt hearing and failed to cooperate with discovery orders. So uh, AB is going to be... Um, yeah, I think he could be in there a, little bit, a wee while longer, I think, which is, uh, which is a shame. Um, so it's, uh, you know, that's how it goes. The Dimitri Salita for wishing a speedy speedy recovery for Delaine White was also putting out a wee tweet there as well, a wee statement that for Delaine White saying that he could pull out the Wallen fight and go straight into the Fury fight, which we already discussed. And obviously Mike Tyson coming out saying his reports of fighting Logan Paul in February. That's all I've got, mate. It's been quite quiet this week. Oh, sorry, one for Eddie Hearn for that. They you know, the kind of, how can we say, they don't try and put out fires this week, shall we say. <laughs> we'll call it whatever we can. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh-huh. sorry, I one more, one more for me, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lee McAllister, some of the folk po- uh, po- will remember him, uh, for Aberdeen, he was fine. <laughs> It was fighting out in Ghana this uh, this Friday night actually called that uh, place <laughs> under under league. Oh, Renee de Ghana, there's a fucking there's for a the fucking WBO Africa. Africa. The WBO Africa belt, right? Uh, he's actually part promoter for this fight. Uh, the old Kingsway building, Ushertown, Accra, Ghana. Uh, and he's fighting a guy called Justice Addy, who's thirty seven year old, right? <laughs> He's fighting in the fucking... I just happened to come across the fight just by pure coincidence on Friday night. And he's fighting <laughs> in the fucking pissing rain. The rain's coming in vertically, right? He's knocking this opponent over the fucking ring. And I could just sense the opponent saying, it's fucking pissing the rain, dude. I can might just chuck it. And he did. But it wasn't so much that. It was a folk at ringside watching the fight. You know those white plastic chairs you get that you see England fans chucking about every other, you know, domestic football tournament or whatever, and that, you know, or, or at the Euros in the World Cup and they're fighting the Russians. Well, they had actually picked those up and used them for fucking uh, as, as umbrellas it's at ringside. All you see was these fucking, these fucking white legs sticking up in the fucking air and walking about the ringside because the rain was that fucking heavy. So the fight last. Ah, is that needed the screen, oh, Come on, Jimmy it, Tappy it, with the money. Come on, the fuck. <laughs> the pound 79 from Jimmy Tappy. Thank Still you. We're talking about. About Jimmy, <laughs> silent promotions is up and running. You were just wait, wait to see what that's worth in Ethereum, man. We are going to be fucking lit with that. Oh, on, Jimmy. Shit. Now put that in Shiba. We need the exponential growth, Rob. <laughs> so that's uh, what I've got, mate. All right, uh, Oz, you got anything for us this week, my friend? Oz, any nominations? Sorry, no. <laughs> okay. All right, and uh, let's see here. Uh, Rob, uh, was that one or two videos that you sent there? There's two Floyd videos I see at the bottom. I just want to make sure it's not both of them. I sent Steve one, so I'm not sure which one of these, but uh, if it's the one from last week, we can just cut it. I'll interject what this one is going to do. This was a sleeper. I missed this the first time, like, for uh, uh, quality. Let's see here. Roll with winners. Blast like a champion. Try jail blasters today. Get the kids out the house. Get them off the game. Get them off the computer. Gear up for the biggest fight of the year with the Jail Blaster Knockout Edition. Win a chance to go to my fight. Mayweather versus Logan Paul. Win a flight, hotel, tickets. You want to go to Miami? Check them out at jailblasters.com. It's the new thing right here. Everybody should get it. Jail Blaster. Nice to see the Floyd still <laughs> busting loads and faces. <laughs> Jail Blasters, baby. TMT Gold Edition. You don't want to miss out on your TMT Gold Edition gel blaster. What did he mean as well when he said, uh, get the kids out of the house, get them off the game? Did he mean like prostitution? Because he goes after that, he goes, get them off the computer. So I'm assuming his kids are in child prostitution and the only thing that can save them is gel blasters with free tickets to fucking Logan Paul fight on top of it. With tickets, a flight. What the fuck does he be talking about? Why are all the ads in just his house, by the way? Yeah, no, don't worry about the, the, the script. I got this shit. Get your children out of prostitution. <laughs> what the fuck, man? Oh, God. Oh, Floyd. 
Floyd, he, he never fails, man. Hey, you gotta wonder how much he's making per ad. Like, what's what's he getting on these? He's on he's on, he's on a conference as well, by the way, with that Grant Cardone. Do you know him, the fucking the sales expert? Like, he's on some fucking, he's in some kind of fucking high high tech LinkedIn fucking stratosphere now with the with the boys in the uh, ten times growth world. So, be interested to see that TED talk. Let me tell you. <laughs> you want to know how to make smart investments? <laughs> just, I'm just waiting for Floyd to tell me how I can make money with real estate, Rob, at, at two o'clock in the morning. It's bound to happen. You know, the worst thing about this is re researching this for these fuckers. Is that every time I go on YouTube now, that ad pops up that 21 Blitz. Yo, you can win cars, jewelry. My car game is crazy. I'm like, this fucker won't go away. Get out of my face with these ads. <laughs> Oh fuck, he's everywhere. Oh man, he uh talk about a guy who's he, I I think he's probably taking low money just because he like never wants to you, go away, you know. Like I, I bet you yeah, yeah, wish wish she had had a gel blaster instead of a knife. She wouldn't be living at 20 <laughs> in the big house. <laughs> I can't believe that. Floyd's daughter might be going to jail for 20 years for stabbing someone that he, she used to be involved with in a sex cult. How the fuck do you make this shit up? 2021 baby all bets are off the fuck and it's a pity all bets are off because you're 21 blitz you know what i mean you're going <laughs> cars jewelry a rolex <laughs> oh, this shit. is jewelry it's jewelry oh man yeah, so jewelry. so we have we have a few up here uh uh joe gonzalez thinking that he won the fight uh, let's see here. Uh, Nick Pete uh, opining about, uh, upon the brilliant business move of Dillian White. Uh, we have fight disciples uh, wanting to take credit for uh, AJ's choice to uh, go look for a new trainer, something that everybody and their, their mother might have said. Uh, let's see here. Uh, the, for the great advice of fucking hidden given to <laughs> Gonzalez following round nine. <laughs> Uh, Clarissa Shields wondering, why don't I get a piece of the gambling action when people place money on me? What kind of fucked up world is this, she wonders. Let's see here. The incredible heavyweight sparring session between Lovejoy and Big Baby Miller. Uh, th the thought that, uh, that uh, somehow, some way, uh, Tyson Fury is going to try to avoid uh, Dillian White. Uh, th uh, thank you very much for that one, uh, uh, Lone Star Cobra. Stacy Smith, you're you're a super bright one. You and Adelaide Bird, uh, you know you're so proof of something. I'm not even going to go there. Not even going to go there. Well, uh, and then we also have uh, Venezuela's Moron Productions. Uh, as far as uh, what was given to us, Andy tossing in some uh, some AB action in there, and it was a it was a moron whoever sent this to me. To be honest with you, because there's nothing to see here. These are a great bunch of lads. So there's a, whoever sent this, get this out of belly of the week. This is a legitimate business move. We don't want to have this included. <laughs> great bunch of lads. What, what kind of assholes are we to try to interrupt the Venezuelan economy, Rob? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, um, Andy, who are you going for this week? Um. I'll just go for the whole Dilling White situation. Um, it's just a complete farce. And have Eddie coming out, try to put water on top of it to crawl the flames a wee bit, and then try and fuck over the fans by saying, you must apply by Monday to get your ticket refunds and that. So I think that's yeah, pretty solid. Yeah, uh, yeah, not mentioning that Monday refund thing. Oz, God yeah. damn it, that Monday refund thing. I mean, that God, that might just be the Satan move of the week. I don't even know if that qualifies. Who are you going for? Uh, do, do you know what? I, I was going to go for, uh, well... Prob and not Probellum. I was going to go for the problem, Adrian Broner. But <laughs> then actually, and and, <laughs> yeah. But actually, uh, thinking about it, any opportunity to get uh, to get Eduardo nominated for that cheap uh, jibe at the fans from where, if it's a case of if you've not let us know by Monday, you're coming no matter what, and we're keeping the cash. <laughs> Absolutely, Eduardo. Eduardo for me, Eduardo and Matroom. Yeah, uh, God, that's a tough one to beat. Rob, Rob, who are you going for? Well, it's tough. It's tough to go against Eddie because those people from the NHS who are after buying tickets and now have to let him know on Monday. 
Let the car go into the chandelier. Fucking whoever, 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 I just want to get like Floyd Mayweather Senior to do the push-up competition. You know the split screen one that from a couple of weeks ago. Or A B for the Jew. Yeah, or something, something cool like that. Like so, fucking help us out. We want to get Floyd on an ad, boxing asylum, money may all day when he's in the UK. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm talking about. We're making smart investments here at the asylum. So support us in our dreams. If you help us, then we help Floyd, and he gets another hair plug. That, that that's how markets work. It's a beautiful thing. It's yeah, all yeah, non-coercive. Yeah, yeah, gets year off. We've, yeah. we've big dreams here at the asylum. We want to fund the fucking free Obanov campaign, but we can't do it on our own. Like, it's fucking just like, expect us to work miracles here every week. Jesus Christ, we're we're just normal people. We're not superheroes. I hope you guys understand that. Um, but I'll tell you what, I'd love to go with you, Rob. But considering how much he has uh, lost uh, over the last couple of months and, uh, you know, moving forward, I think Eddie has to win something, right? Yeah, no, that's so fair. I, I'm going with it with Eddie and the Dillian White and the refund the tickets situation by Monday. What a fucking shit show. Uh, and I'll give an honorable mention to Ben Thornton throwing in that uh, fucking Carl Frotch interview. That was pretty gorgeous as well. What a, what a Mary had in that interview. Like some of his interviews have aged pricelessly, but the, the one where he said there's going to be no fights for Charlo because in the background it's obviously Vegas or somewhere. You see all the lights in the background. And, and that was on the same fucking clip. He said, excuse my language, but pay-per-view is dead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, apparently, apparently eddie has never uh watched uh, eddie izzard's dress to dress to kill special otherwise he would know hey you're british you gotta scale it back a little bit sorry buddy your goals were just a little too lofty so uh anyways eddie Hearn, dillian white you're the co-champions this week congratulations for the payday you're gonna get for getting your ass kicked by Tyson Fury in a few months. So you got that going for you, which is nice. 